What advice do you give to the Muslims in the UK regarding this punish a Muslim day which is supposed to be on the 3rd of April? Wallahi, if you... If the report is true, Allah A'lam, if it is true, and they say the general advice is that if you receive a package that you're not expecting, don't open it except with care. If you receive anything in the post like... uh, you know, you open the package and, and, it, and it looks suspicious, don't continue opening it. If our sisters are generally, I'm not just saying on that particular day, you know, let's say they say, well, we actually meant the fourth. So you're waiting for the third and it happens on the fourth. You know, could that be in any way? So generally speaking, be careful. We are living in difficult times. Sisters generally uh, do not walk alone. You know, out and about, especially after Maghrib, or on quiet streets, you don't know what, you know, what, what kind of attacks are coming. Alhamdulillah, we live in areas. Walillahi alhamd. You know, they say you live in rundown areas and ghettos. Alhamdulillah, they are Muslims. Right, we feel safe. Alhamdulillah. Right, you walk out your door, you look across the road. There's a woman walking out of the house across the road. You're a sister. You walk out. You look at another sister. She's wearing niqab as well. Your neighbors are Muslim. On the other side, there's a Muslim, Somali Muslim on this side, Bangladeshi Muslim on that side. Alhamdulillah, Yawm Al-Eid, he gives you some food and Yawm Al-Eid, the other one gives you food, Somali and Bengali. Alhamdulillah, good. That's how we live. So we live in areas, Alhamdulillah, where we are generally, we feel comfortable. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if you do have to go out, if you do have to go out somewhere, then make sure that you go out and you're always accompanied, especially after dark brothers and sisters unless it is in your area that you know like small heath alam rocks well, even though they are druggies and that they're not interested in you barakallahu feekum they're interested in other druggies well, they're not interested in you mostly alhamdulillah so even though you know they say the crime rate is high but generally speaking even the criminal has some respect for the person of sunnah so long as you behave with righteousness and you don't use foul language you know, you don't do anything that they recognize. Well, you know, as a, as a religious person, you're not supposed to be behaving like that. So if they recognize that, then you are lowering, you know, their value, the value that they give to Islam because they see you as a representative of Islam. But generally, uh, you know, walk in the company of others, uh, especially women. If you don't have to, uh, as I say, strange parcels, I don't know what else that they've got, you know, points for this and 10 points for that and 1,000 points for this. Anyway, don't live in fear, but it doesn't mean that you don't keep yourself safe. So we don't walk around with fear in our hearts, no. Right? We fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but that does not mean that we walk around carefree as if nothing's going to happen. So you keep yourself safe, don't carry any weapons with you, barakallahu feekum. Sisters, anyway, generally you should have this, uh, what do they call them? No, not spray. No, walk around in spray. You get, get arrested for that. Panic alarm. Yeah, panic alarm. You press it, and whoever's near it goes deaf. Alhamdulillah. And, you know, the sister, have it attached to your handbag. So, or to your, you know, in your hand, or, you know, if it's on your handbag on your shoulder, then keep your hand upon it. Anything happens, just press it. Inshallah, it's a precaution. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you. But take the asbab that will increase, you know, your likelihood of being safe. But don't walk around and live in fear. We don't do that. Barakallahu feekum. There's no need to do that. 